morning. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Lord, that this is a day that you have made. We're rejoicing that you're the God of our salvation, that you're our Savior, you're our healer, you're our deliverer, you're our provider, you're King of kings and Lord of lords. And we invite you this morning to come, anoint our ears to hear, anoint our eyes to see, God, that we might draw closer to you. Challenge us, Holy Spirit, God, for what lies ahead. And we'll give you the praise, the glory, and all of the honor. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'll go right to the Word. Turn with me to the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter. And uh, there's a story there that God was speaking to me about with our theme this year, which is, or this month, which is risky prayer. Risky prayers. This is risky business when you pray and trust God. Starting at verse 8. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Ur went to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Say prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. In the old King James it says weary. And so they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and Ur supported his hands on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this memorial in a book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek under the sun. And Moses built an altar and called its name Jehovah Nisi, or interpreted, the Lord is my banner. And he said, because the Lord had sworn, they, they changed here, changed here, changed back here, almost caused an accident. But from my perspective, I'm saying, you don't want to get out of that lane. See, I can see further ahead. That's where the problem is. But see, you're trying to get over in the lane where the problem is. But if you just stay in this lane, you're going to make it. And those are the ones that are progressing. See, God has that perspective. He knows what's around the corner. He knows what's up ahead. We don't. We're dependent upon him. And so he has to speak to our hearts to order our steps. Have you ever got in the line at the bank? They got in the wrong line. <laughs> Over there at Lucky's, and the lady pulled out a bag of coins. I said, oh. <laughs> Folk going through the line, I got out. <laughs> See, God knows ahead of time. And so he sets Moses on the top of the hill, and Moses raises his hand in prayer. This is the same rod that split the Red Sea. This is the same rod that brought water out the rock. This is the same rod that guided the children of Israel through the, the, the wilderness and all of those things. And he's got it raised. He's in prayer. Moses is up there praying. Lord, Lord, he see the advantage. Yes, yes, yes. We got the advantage. We are prevailing. We're prevailing. We're prevailing. But you know, then his arms got weary. His arms got heavy. And as long as his arms were up, they were prevailing in prayer. And the staff speaks of the presence and the power of God. Yeah. That's why he raised it. And he held it high. But pretty soon, they, they got weary. It illustrates the power of prayer. And we have to stay connected to God because God's the one that gives us the power to overcome. But even in prayer, just like Moses... You get weary sometimes. 
You ever get tired? Now I didn't ask God this. You know, repeat and repeat. I didn't ask him over and over and over again. Nothing's happening. Nothing's going on. This has been a long time. I don't see no progress. I don't see no miracles. I don't see your hand moving. I don't feel no wind. The Holy Spirit. I don't feel, I'm tired. Come on, anybody here tired? You know that's the national anthem in the church. How you doing? What's going on? I used to ask my little grandchildren, how you doing? Poppy, I'm tired. <laughs> tired of what? But no matter what, in this battle, in this conflict, you're seeing things going, your hands begin to come down. And the enemy begins to prevail. He begins, and, and you know what our temptation is? To take your hands off of the, the rod, I'm going down and do something myself. See, I know what they need to do. They need to be swinging to the right, and they need to be this. And Let me get my sword. Shucks. God, you, God, hold on. And we come off what I call that Velcro cross. You know the Velcro cross? See, we're supposed to be nailed to the cross, but we got a Velcro cross. See? Things get bad, and we say, I told you, you don't know me like that, you know. <laughs> You don't know where I came from. I wasn't always saved. <laughs> and then when we get through cussing somebody, uh, ooh, you know you do. We gonna jump back on the. <laughs> Jesus keep me near the cross. Dear. Come on now. This ain't no Velcro cross. When he puts you up there, you got to die. Ain't no coming down. Now, I know some folk came off the cross this week. <laughs> Moses was tired. Man, I'm tired of praying. I'm tired. I've been believing. I've been trusting. I've been hoping. I've been reading my Bible. I paid my tithes. I did everything he told me to do. But listen, Lord, I think I'm going to have to take care of this. <laughs> and then flesh gets involved. It's like when your children wanted to help you do something. You know, it's going to take five hours longer. Here, hold a hammer. Um, so, you, you, you tell me, you're messing it up for everyone. We could be done and go on about our business, but you try to teach your children, and that's how God is with us. We got our hands all in the business. He said, man, I told you that the battle's not yours. To pray, to trust, to believe me. I got some folks down there fighting. I got some stuff going on you don't know nothing about. And you can see it, but keep your hands up. So Aaron and Ur come alongside Moses to lift up his hand. See, the real victory in prayer is in the body of Christ. It's a team effort. Tell somebody it's a team effort. Moses, Ur, Aaron, that's the dream team in prayer. And you got the dream team here. That when we get together and bind together and, and, and we see someone who's failing, that, that, that we come alongside them. They need help and support sometimes in prayer. I need help and support sometimes in prayer. The Bible says where two or more are gathered together in my name, I'll show up. So if you see somebody dipping and see somebody that looks despondent and depressed and looks the devil all week long. That's why we got to be observant and, and, and discerning on Sunday in prayer just to give somebody might just need a hug. That's all they need. So we, we do get weary in prayer. They didn't criticize Moses. Well, you should be holding it more like this. No, you, they didn't criticize how he was praying. They didn't advise him how to hold the rod. They simply supported him and kept the rod up by holding his hands up. And in prevailing prayer, we're not going to do it by ourselves. If it wasn't for the people at the church,
years ago when he first got here, he said, I want to use a young man. Let me go over and, and just have lunch with him. And we became friends just like that. Praise God. So we'd go to lunch and this and that. He'd tell me what he was going through. I'd tell him what I was going through. He'd pray for me. I'd pray for him. And you need an Aaron and some herbs in your life. You don't need no busybody or tell them about all your business. Child, let me tell you. Their hands was weak. They just put down the rod like that. You know, no, you need some real Aaron and hers who will come by and stand by you. See, prevailing prayer changes things. It's an act of faith and confidence in God. And we got to pray in spite of our frustrations. That's how you prevail in prayer. You got to pray in spite of the obstacles. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. So lift up them hands in prayer. Lift up those hands with discouraged people. I talked to a couple of discouraged people this week who, who are just struggling and going through. Someone who's in the hospital. Someone who's having a difficult time with a child and struggling with difficulty. Come, well, let me have a word of prayer with you. And see, pray right then. Don't tell folk you're going to pray. Just a, let, let me just breathe. Can I breathe a word of prayer for you right now? Father, in the name of Jesus and lift up and hold up their hands. Moses, as powerful as he was, needed help. God's man of faith and power, God's man of deliverance, got weary and got tired. They had to come along. So when we stop praying, when we stop coming close to God, we lose ground in our spiritual walk. Don't stop, don't, don't give up. When you feel overwhelmed, Call for reinforcements. Right. You got somebody you can call? How many of y'all got somebody you can call? How many of y'all know somebody that can get a prayer through? Now, wait a minute. This is different. How many of you know somebody that can get a prayer through? See, the hands start to... I know people are pray for me, but... But wait a minute, let me reverse this. How many folk can call you? Can you get a prayer through? I remember my preacher friend here, he pastored a great church here. He called me and said, man, you know anybody can get a prayer through? He called me. I said, man, what you talking about, man? <laughs> I'm just playing with you. But uh, the question comes, who can get one through? Because that's who I'm calling. You know who prayed for me was my mama. So I know who can get one through. Mother, grandma, whoever it was. Sister Donob in the church, Mother Pudding, you know. <laughs> Mother, we had a lady in our church, Sister B, she could get a prayer through. No, she was going to pray for her. Sister Alma. Listen, we started our church in the Scottish Rite. I'm going to go off track right here. In the Scottish Rite. And there was a woman named Sylvia Brown. She was there, this is 30 years ago. And she was there, and she was a psychic. You might have heard of her. She was on television and newspapers. Well, she held her services up at the Scottish Rite. And so we were going in, and they had the big room. And I had a little bitty room because we were just starting out. And we go in, they was wearing collars and selling amulets and magic wands in the hallways, all that kind of stuff. And they said, oh, your children are so cute. You think they could come sing for us? I said, yeah, if you let me come and talk a little bit before they sing. And she said, no, we can't do that. I said, then the children can't come over there and sing. So the mother started meeting up at the church at 6 o'clock in the morning. And they started praying and walking around Sylvia Brown's stuff. She had 800 people going to that church. It dropped to six. It dropped to four. It dropped to three. It dropped to two. We took over the big building and they left. I don't know where she is today. But they prayed. Do you know anyone that can get a prayer through, that knows how to do warfare in the spirit? Look what Ecclesiastes says. Although one may be overpowered by another, two can stand with him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Joshua, the army, Moses, Aaron, and Ur would not have experienced victory 
except for prayer. Prayer. Keep your hands raised up like that. Put your hands up like this. You know, it's hard to keep them up all the time. But see, we're reaching. We're like that antenna on that old Ford that I had. You know, in addition to the coat hanger. You know, we swing that thing and, and we get the radio. K-S-O-L, K-D-I-A. You know, we, we was trying to tune in. And then, then you had the television too. Anybody know about the rabbit ears? You don't know nothing about the aluminum foil on the end of the rabbit ears, do you? Put that aluminum. And, and my mother would say, I was the remote, turn that baby <laughs> so I can get to Ed Sullivan's show and Lawrence Welk. I said, who want to get the Ed? You know, but you're tuning in. It helps you to focus. It helps you to tune. God, here I am. It's also the international sign of surrender. And so Moses kept his hands raised. And because they kept their hands raised, the Bible says the enemy was defeated. The obstacle was removed by persistent prayer, trusting in the power of God. And then what did Moses do? He builds an altar. And he calls the name of the altar Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Now, an altar is a place of worship. And in the Old Testament, if you read through Genesis and also in Exodus, they said, when God said to build an altar, he says, I want you to take stones, uncut, and I want you to pile them up, and I want you to build me an altar. And Abraham built several altars, Moses built several altars, Joshua built an altar. We see People throughout scripture building an altar. This is before the temple. Well, the altar was made of rocks. What's the definition of a rock? I mean, the simplest definition of a rock. It's a hard thing. A rock is a hard thing. And if you're going to build an altar sometimes, you've got to take the hard things in your life. You've got to pile them up. Finances, hard head kids, <laughs> crazy mate, supervisor I want to slap, <laughs> traffic in San Jose. You, look, bah, bah. You, you pile it up at the end of the day. You take your hard things and you worship God. That's how you build an altar. Don't, don't run from your hard things. Don't cry because of your hard things. Just pile them up. Lift your hands and begin to worship God. And he called it Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Better interpreted that Jesus is the victory. I don't have to get the victory. Jesus is poisonally the victory. He gives me victory, but he is the victory, and he lives in me. He provides for all of our needs, and he gives us victories daily, not just one at a time. He gives them daily. I get to experience the victories that God has for us. So our challenge is to move forward and watch God give us great victory over our great challenges. Now, one of the problems is, is that we tend to complicate our faith. And faith is absolutely, and prayer and faith is simple. It's simple. You just look at the 17th chapter in Luke, and you all know the story that the soldier comes, the centurion comes, and he says, Jesus, my servant is sick, deathly, and he's going to die. And Jesus says, I'll come. But before he gets there, the centurion sends word. He says, listen, I'm a man under authority. I tell one to go, and he goes. I tell one to come, and he comes. I tell one to do this, and he does it. He said, only speak the word, and my servant will be healed. That's how simple faith and prayer is, just to believe what God said. This centurion wasn't a Christian. He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Gentile, yet Jesus said, I haven't seen faith like that anywhere. 
This man just understood my authority, and I have all power in heaven and in earth. There is nothing too hard for God. My authority outranks anyone else's authority, and he understood that and just said, speak the word, and my servant will be healed. And when they got back to the house, the servant was healed. That challenges my soul. I'm closing with this verse. Thessalonians says in 1 Thessalonians 2.13, For this reason, we always thank God. Because without ceasing, when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it not as words of men, but as the truth in the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. We don't receive this as the word of man. We receive it as the word of God. And when we pray, we don't pray like we're praying to humans. We're praying to God. And I think I've said this before, the power of prayer doesn't lie in the one praying. Because some folk can really pray. They can pray till you want to get up and shout. Our old deacon in the church in Hawaii uh, Reverend Carolina, who was from Carolina, he used to pray, so he said, pray, Reverend, pray. You didn't even need to preach after you got praying. Dear Lord, come down from heaven above. I thank God that my bed wasn't my chilling boy. He would go on and on and on and on. Come now, Father, from high above. Uh, touch it, thou thy servant. Uh, move, Holy Spirit. And he would pray. We'd, we'd be like this in the Pray, Reverend Carolina. Pray. But the power of prayer doesn't lie in the one who's praying. We have no power. The power of prayer lies in the one who's listening. And whether you pray the simplest prayer you ever heard or any prayer that's simple, God's ear is attuned to the cry of his people. And he looks for us to prevail. Yeah. How bad do you really want it? Yeah. How bad do you really do? So, so we were talking this morning, and he said, yeah, we got a whole lot of people that can pray, but do you got to put some believing with the prayer? Yeah. Because it works like this. God's word comes to our head. And so now I know. I got head knowledge. I know that the Bible says thus and such. And if you ask, it shall be given. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door is going to be open. I know that. But now I got to get it from here to here. That's a work of faith. Now I've got to say that I believe it. But it can't stop there either. It can't stop with me just saying I believe God. It goes from the head to the heart, but it has to be manifested in the hands. I got to start walking, talking, living like I believe God. And when I pray and hold up that banner, when I pray that he's my covering, when I pray, I got to know that he hears me and that he's able and that I just have to continue to press in and to press on in Jesus' name. Under his banner, Jehovah Nissi, we're assured victory. Tell somebody, keep on praying. Keep on praying, keep on praying.